It's about 7.30. I'm getting here, I'm gonna to try to do a preview of some of the cars we're trying to get bought today. I'm looking at a couple different diesels. There's some other vehicles on some lists that we're doing today and not sure what we're gonna end up with or if we'll even end up with anything today because I'd rather not buy anything than buy something that I regret buying like, well, like my Eco Diesel. So I'm, I'm trying to get, you know, you gotta be careful, but you can't be scared at the same time. That there has taught me a lot. That vehicle that I will not make any money on is not possible. Fixing up someone else's con job, it's not possible for me to make money on that Eco Diesel. I'm just trying to make it nice for somebody now and cut as much loss as I can. I have to finish it. I have to finish that truck, but I cannot make money on that truck. All I can do is try to control loss as much as possible and try to put somebody in a nice truck. It'll cost me about $10,000 more than I thought it was going to. It's about right. It's about $10,000 more than I thought it was going to to make that truck what it should be. So when you're buying off Copart, be really careful. I'm telling you, there, that, that thing had telltale signs that somebody was a cobbler. That truck did. For instance, the wrong wheels on a $46,000 truck. The wrong headlights and grill on a $46,000 truck. There were signs I could see and I just, I guess I ignored them. Because I fell in love with that truck. Be careful what you fall in love with. Because that love affair cost me about $10,000. I see you out there. It's going to be a beautiful, wonderful vehicle when we're done. So, you know, whoever gets it's going to get a nice rig. But it's going to be at a great cost to this company. I'm getting on the Jeep. Wayland's already changed the oil on the Jeep today. On this particular vehicle, that looks like a pain to get to, so we, he decided to go ahead. And that was a good idea to go ahead and do it now, instead of with it all together. He's also changing the oil on this. I'm getting ready to, hopefully, put the mechanics back. I got a feeling I'm going to transfer it to Wayland because the sales are getting ready to start in just a few minutes. Darn it. Um, I really do want to work on stuff, but a lot of times you have to do the office stuff, and I think the boys think I just use that for excuse, but... I like working hands-on a lot better than sitting. Okay, just finished up the auctions. It, and I am sitting back down because I was sitting here for a long time. It's 1127. We got two bought today. We got, the first thing we got bought, loaded, LTC, the white diamond pearl, the white pearl, white diamond, it's called white diamond, but I call it white pearl diamond, whatever. We got that bought. Now it's got what I call high miles. It's got 102,000 miles, but the reason I got this vehicle the damage is so minor on this thing. It does have the driver's airbag thrown out, but the body damage on the outside looks really light. This is a run and drive vehicle. See there? So I, I, this vehicle, when it's done, we're gonna be somewhere around 10 grand, somewhere in that area. 10 to 11, depend on what we get into, but looks like a really nice, it's got navigation on it. Leather seats, well, it's an LTZ, so I'm sure you realize that. It's got the sunroof and all that. Anyways, there's one vehicle we got. The other vehicle is that big boy. Now, this is a long bed, 2,500. Look what year that is. We don't know the miles because the battery's dead. I took a gamble because we don't, we don't know the miles. But this is a pretty, pretty nice truck. Um... This thing ought to be knocked out pretty quick. You can see right here, it took a shot in that passenger wheel and drove the wheel back. So I'm I'm planning on, I don't know if I'm planning for sure. We might have to put a front differential in it, maybe. The only body damage I can see is that, and the wheel touched the fender. So we, I'm probably going to be able to save that fender, I think. There's no airbags out. Like I said, it's a long bit. It's a beast. It's got the backup sensors. We'll have to see what it's like when we get here. This truck's going to be somewhere in the 30s. I don't know where. Depends on the miles, of course. Depends on how much I got in it. But please follow this build if you're remotely interested in a diesel pickup. It's going to be hard to find one a whole lot newer than that. 
for the price we're going to be doing this thing at. So, of course, it is a four by four. I'm still trying to get this camera thing figured out. Where in the world's that at? You just got to take my word. No, you don't take my word. Right there it is. Okay. So we, we're going to be. It'll be a few days before it gets in. I'd say my brother that hauls these for me. He's having a tough time lately. <clears throat> so I don't know when we're going to see this thing. It might be next week. I'd love to have it tomorrow night, but that's probably not going to happen. Please follow the build Dan Stapleton Body Shop on YouTube or Facebook. We'll keep you posted. All right. For the most part, we have got this dude together. Most of it. Still got to. I've somehow lost that thing for this side. Somebody has. So I gotta get that on it before I put the grill on it, then the bumper goes on it, but I think the fluids are cycled through it. This thing is close to sand down paint. I got that place right there. I gotta correct that place. And this thing's about ready to, I think you got the airbag systems to go. Nope, he don't. There's something wrong with the airbag system. We gotta figure that out yet. Not the door locks. I'm trying to run windows up in this thing. So this one should be ready pretty soon. Ah, uh, 72,000 miles. Anyways. No, oh, yeah, looks like we're gonna add on again. All right, guys, I am headed home. We have had a really tight few weeks, to say the least. Really tight, really tight. Nothing was moving. Wasn't much work coming in. Man, it's just like, I don't know, it's like a switch flipped. It's like the Lord just flipped a switch. And we've been really blessed. And it's exciting. I think it's more exciting after you had a tough time than when everything's just always smooth. I, I don't like the tough times. But I think you appreciate the better times after they've been tough. We have really been blessed this week. Now, all that money that we've been brought in, it's going back out. It's going right back out. But the fact is, at least I had it to go back out. Could you imagine it having to go out and I didn't have it? Thank the Lord for it.